Hey, everybody. Welcome into the latest edition of Sports Fanatic News. As you can see, I'm joined by a very special guest, Timmy Flyers. Guy Solik, you better know who he is if you're a Flyers fan because he does a great job on his podcast on YouTube. And uh, do you do do you put it on other podcast services as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, I watch um, Chris Mayer's uh, podcast. Oh yeah, Flyers fan mania ninety three. Yeah. Chris, yeah, he's been a guest on here a couple times. He does great work, uh, wise beyond his years. Um, he does a fantastic job. I agree with that. Uh, and then uh, Flyers and Indy Gritty getting gritty with the podcast is your reef and the that's uh, the other site that I do stuff for. So um, they all do great stuff. But we're start um, we're start with the good, um, I guess, and go to the fact that the Reading Royals, Timmy, as I know you've been paying attention, are up 2-0 in the series yeah. because of a out of character winning game one, kind of yeah, baiting, getting baited into more physical play by the main Mariners, which is who still hold the Broad Street Bullies tone from when they were the Flyers affiliate during the Snyder days. Oh, yeah. Um, and they try to bait you into stuff. But the Royals were still able to walk away with a 3-2 win in game one. And they talked about how much they wanted to get Flodell a shutout in game one. Well, guess what they're able to do in game two? Get him that 3 nothing shutout. So what were your thoughts of just the overall play of the team in the first two games? Because I don't think it could have went much better. <laughs> in game one, first and second period, they're, they're the best periods. But mm -hmm. um, I have to say, the third period almost got away from them. Uh, Sonia did something very costly. It really cost yeah. the team in the end. And that almost ended up biting them in the ass. But, um, but you know, Sonia, I, I know he probably was getting a little amount of momentum going. And maybe he took it a little... Too far, but you know, sometimes that happens. But I'm sure next game I'll know better and I'll be a better player for it. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the most important part of those, uh, when you do something like that, is the second part you said where you grow and learn from the experience and become a better player for the mistake you just made, which is what I've, I've seen Sonia yeah. do multiple times in his five year uh, pro career in the a AHL level, where I think or do it at yeah. the ECHL because he's already been dominating. It's just we lost them for one game yesterday. The team, it showed the depth. Well, actually, that's a good question to go to secondary since we just talked about him being out and other guys stepping up. It showed the depth his team has with having guys like Cooper and Mike Shen being able to just step right in. You also still have Jackson Cressy who hasn't played a playoff game yet. So um, it, it shows the depth that this team has being able to kind of have those guys. So, like, I know I've talked about this before, but... <clears throat> Doesn't it seem like with the Flyers, which is great for the Royals, but not great for the Flyers overall organization, that the best development system and the best coach are probably in double A? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that because in the minors, they, you know, the, the players in the minors, they want to go the, uh, the extra mile to be a good yep. team, good, to be good players, and they, they work extra hard. To get up to the top, to the uh, big club. Yeah, and especially when you're from the ECHO, because you got to work up too. Now this nowadays, like Russ Cohen and other analysts that have been at it for you, talk about the trickle down effect and domino effect of just how lethal talent is in general around hockey has trickled down to let alone the ECHO to the Southern Hockey League, which has taken a little bit longer for it to catch up to the ECHL. So like, I think there's just more overall talent as a whole. Um, where yeah, that so. that's why you're getting to see guys rise to the NHL more so in the last 10 years than you ever have from the ECHL because the talent level is kind of just uh, becoming astronomically yeah. larger. But what I see from, from Hayden Hodgson, like he came from the ECHL, yep. went to the EHL, came up to the Flyers, and he played well for the Flyers. I got I to gotta admit that he... You, you played well. You really showed some grit out there. I agree with that. I think Hodgson should honestly have a chance to make it out of the gate, which I think that's the idea they have going into next year. The problem is he's banged up, so we'll have to see if he needs AHL time since he wouldn't have been playing hockey for a while, and then he'll be coming into camp and all that. But 
I, I mean, the way that Hodgson plays the game, I feel like he won't, though, because he's one of those guys, like, just from listening to all the interviews he's done with Bob while watching on NHL TV, he's so confident in himself and one of those guys that, like, is over not, – not cocky, but, like, sometimes just overconfident in a good way – that he always just knows how to prepare for everything where it's like, oh, if he knows he's a little bit slower working his way back, he'll just do add something to like his workout right. Like he's one of those guys that probably just add something to his workout regimen and be like, oh, well, let me do like curls or let me do one of those like things that you roll on your knees or whatever if his knees – like Hood, he's one of those guys that just intuitively kind of thinks like, well, if this is bothering me, let me do X, where not everybody has the ability to kind of do that, where I think that's why – uh Hodgson might actually be a very good undrafted guy in the NHL, not as a great top six player, but like someone you put in your bottom six and he's a good, uh, basically a Tom Wilson style player, but nobody's ever going to be Tom Wilson. Like, no, like nobody's ever going to be able to beat the crap out of somebody and be that good offensively. But Hodgson plays that type of style yeah. where you love him if he's on your team and you don't love him if he's not. <laughs> like, yeah, he's kind of like... What you call a uh, a throwback to the to Philadelphia Phantoms days? Yeah, he is. He's a throwback to when the Phantoms were definitely the snarl boys of the uh, AHL with the Philadelphia. That's a good that's a good uh, way to put it as well. And then Sonia is kind of a throwback player too, in the sense that he's a smaller guy that fights a lot of guys. That's why I think he's helpful for the Royals in the postseason. But um, he he will be back for Game Three because that was only a one game suspension. Um, yeah. For uh, Brennan Sonny. So he will be back for game three, assuming Kirk McDonald um, decides to put him in next Thursday. So um, that's a good sign for Royals fans. But as we wrap up uh, talking about Reading and then we're going to the Flyers and we're in with Lehigh since Lehigh is at least had a mediocre to average season where the Flyers obviously did not. uh, We're uh, go to the goaltending. I think the biggest thing for the Royals this year has been. They've had so many different goaltenders, but a lot of them have been pretty good goaltenders because Kirk McDonald's so good at – we talked about it already earlier uh, in the first five minutes, but Kirk McDonald's so good at assessing talent. And, I mean, he got a goaltender for one game uh, right before, of course, they were able to uh, start the game. Yeah. Not, not like hours before they got Brody yeah, Place. So, yeah, so I yeah, mean – like, Yeah, and then he almost fought Adirondacks goalie in the first game. Yeah. And, yeah, I was scared that we were going to blow that game, that divisional game, because of what Sonia did. He got a penalty, they got, they got a power play, but luckily, luckily we killed it off, won the division, and won the conference, so thank God for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy everything the way everything went, and it's going to be... The reason I want this series to end, which I think it will end in Maine, I don't think I said that on the broke, is just I don't think we'll be back in Satande Arena for this series. But the, I know because the regular season is not a yeah, judge for I me. Think, honestly, I think the, the Royals are a, a much better team than the Maine Mariners. I, I just see they're, 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 they were they were in, um, out playing Maine in the, in the last two games. So that's a good sign. Yeah, exactly, and I and I, and what I was going to say is I can't go off of the regular season. Oh, nobody won against each other on the road because in the regular season, the ECHL schedule is a gauntlet, especially in a COVID year where you have like five and games in seven days, or like you know you can't no, go off I, of, like you can't go off of that. Now yeah. they're having this long break. Everyone's going to have fresh legs coming into that three and three if it is a three and three, or it could just be Thursday, Friday if they sweep them. Uh, but. Uh, th- so I think that's a completely different precedent than the way it was in the regular season when these teams are playing each other away. In the I think it was six meetings they had with the Maine Mariners in the regular season. It was either five or six, I think. It was the least of the division. The, the, the team they played the least in the division was Maine. So that's also yeah. why this postseason series was interesting. But to me, just to wrap it up with the Royals, their goaltending, I think, though, is honestly with now Logan Flodell and that rocking those uh, red and black pads from Acadia University. Uh, he's one of the already best goalies in the league since he came in. And then you have one of the best of all time when he comes back down from the Phantoms, because the Phantoms have been officially eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. And Pat Nagel. Pat Nagel. So I think their goaltending is a okay. They also have Hanson eligible to come down. So he's a very solid young goaltender. And then Usti's injured, so I don't think he'll be down. But they have a bunch of different options in net, and that's always yeah. a good thing to have. 
the thing with AHL, ECHL is way different than the NHL because in the ECHL, sometimes you'll see them if they have a back to back, they'll use a different goalie in the next game. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it definitely. The NHL, the rather. Now, with the Royals, Kirk's kind of had more of the NHL approach with Flodell just because Logan Flodell has yeah. been so sharp that he's like, well, I'm not taking this guy. Like, I'm pretty sure he played a three and three the one with. Or, or like, 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 I think like with uh, Flo, it's just like, well, if you, if you're sharp and you're telling me that you're good to go, I'm just gonna like, like, go, just, just keep doing your thing, uh, because he made the joke in the press conference, like when uh, we asked him, like, so what got Flodell ingratiated in his uh, teammates so quickly? And he's like, well, if you have a nine thirty save percentage, that's a pretty easy way to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is true, if you come in and have one of the best save percentages. In the history of the league, in your first twenty games of the team, probably a good way to get you uh, get your team to trust you and really like you uh, yeah. off the bat. But we're moved now into a season that um, isn't good. <laughs> Danny Briere even said it when he was there for the asking question, answering questions for Reading, where he even admitted to having a bad season. The Flyers have. Um. We'll start with a positive, though, because the, in the bad season lately, we've had the Brinks up, the Adders, the Noah Cates especially probably has looked the best out of all of them, and he's the latest pick in the draft as a fifth rounder. Um, what's the good signs? Like, what, what can you see as the bright lights in these prospects? So there's – like, I know we're not going to be a good team next year, but, like, like in terms of, like, building around these guys as you're rebuilding, do you like these guys as much as I do in terms of being able to kind of have them as three of the, say, top nine of the future? I think it's good that we have these guys on the team because, it's, I mean, it's simple. The future for this team is very bright with these young kids, and – the things they do out there on the ice is amazing. These young kids are getting to play, and it just feels great to see see them succeed on the ice. Yeah. Despite despite the bad season and how everything went down, it's good to see if the the future produce. You know. No. Yeah. And also, if you look at our season, uh, since we've caught up, and it had to be by necessity at this point because of injuries, but since you let like the Hogbergs or this play you let all these guys play the teams actually played at a but even in losing efforts they played at a more magnified level because you have a bunch of guys that are trying to prove their keep when you have a bunch of guys in your lineup that are trying to prove their keep you're going to have a much better overall game because these guys want nhlers yet they're trying to prove that they're nhlers so they're going to yeah. play at the top of their game to round out the season so, like, to me, that's why I was always advocating for this sooner. Like, why aren't these guys up sooner? Because you're going to see – like, the thing that fans wanted – like, if you're Seattle, Seattle's a fun team to watch even though they're not good this year because they're competitive every night and look – like, where the Flyers for a yeah. long time were one of the worst teams to watch in the league because they looked like they were just cruising on cruise control out there. And they're like, oh, the puck's on my stick. Yeah. Let me shoot it. And, and like, like, that doesn't work. Where now it yeah. seems like with the infused young energy, TK's kind of back up on his skates, even though he's not an older player, but he's playing the best he's played all season. Uh, you have guys like uh, JVR, who I still think should not be in the top six, but that's beside the point, uh, playing better than he's uh, played most of the season. So, like, I think all those kind of factor into the fact that you get this young infused energy and that really helps. And also the fact that Noah Cates is one of your best defensive forwards that just walked into the league two and a half weeks ago. So that's a good thing and also a problem that also should be addressed in the offseason because the fact that he's your best defensive forward in the first two and a half weeks shows me if I'm the GM of the Flyers, defensive forwards is one of the main things I need to get in the offseason to build this team around. So if there's like a young guy in the free agency or a young guy that a team's trying to trade, like a Luke Cunning type, then that would not be a bad guy for the Flyers to get because those guys might not be great offensively, yeah. but we need more defense in our forward core as well. But um, I was going to say for you, though, because we kind of talked about the young guys' as bright spots. What's your viewpoint? Because I know I've gotten into it with some of our fans about our goaltending and some people thinking it's worse than it is. Uh, what's your viewpoint on Carter Hart's season before he got injured and uh, what you thought about it? Well, 
I kind of think Carter Hart's injury was based on, you know, he was um, really uh, breaking his back for this team. And he every, night after night, he tried his absolute best to get the team a win, but the guys in front of him, they tend to let him down a lot. They let him down a lot, a lot this year. So I think if we had better guys in front of him, maybe better defense, they can make him look like Martin Brewer. Yeah. They had good defense in front of him. Yeah, I mean, he already did. I mean, we saw it in 2019. 20, like, people forget if you go back to AB's first yeah. year when the team was True. playing the best they ever played defensively in years. Uh, and you can even look at that, not just from eyesight, but from I'm not a big just look at stats that are too black and white. But if you look at the stats, plus remember that team, you, you, you're going to know how good they were defensively compared to other Flyers teams of the past seven years. So, like, to me, that's the shine of what Hart can really be. This year and last year is not at all the sign of what Hart can really be because last year seemed like he was nursing something. And then this year he was healthy until the end of the season and yeah. um, and was fine. And, like, 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 what I don't like is people will say, oh, well, his save percentage isn't fantastic. And I'm like, well, save percentage is not just a goaltending stat. Like, yes, it's a stat for a goalie, but your save percentage also factors into how much your team hangs you out to dry. And you kind of hinted at that with your thing. They're, they don't play the best in front of them. And I would even go as far as that they kind of hang ha- Carter Hart out to dry because the Flyers leave so many guys open in the yeah. A money scoring spots. Like this, the high slot, the, 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 the near slot, like even right in front of the net just for a tap in the Flyers might be the team that leave most guys open in those spots that that I, I think that's a big reason why our goalies don't have the stats of others. But, like, I would even say I don't think Morning Jones has played a bad season. I just think he his, his stats are skewed because the team doesn't have great defense. But, like, he, he actually plays better, it seems, when he faces more shots. And he's one of those goalies that's better when he's over 30 shots because it keeps him in the game more, where when he's in, like, a 20-23, those are the games he actually allows four or five goals because it doesn't seem like he's in the game it, it, as much. It doesn't get in the groove as much. So, like, I don't mind how he's even played. I think it's just we have to look at the overall play, and I think the problem is a lot of people stop watching when the team's doing so bad and then still comment yeah. like they are watching. And then they're like, oh, well, his stats aren't great. And it's like, but that's because our defense is one of yeah. the worst. Like so, like in the in the league this year at performance. So, like, that's going to factor in. But I'm assuming, like, I, I, I'm assuming you kind of feel the same way about that. Yeah, and I honestly, I honestly think... When Ryan Ellis got hurt, everything just started going wrong for the Flyers. Everything. It did, and I hope he's able to come back. I mean, I'm still – I hope Ellis is able to play again, but I don't have the highest confidence he is. So, like, that's, that's just so. – I mean, if he, if, if he can't play, I think he should just walk away from the team and just – well, I think it'll just be a Kessler thing where you just keep him on LTIR and you don't have to pay. Like, you pay him, but, like, it's not to your cap yeah. or anything. You don't have to – basically, you don't have to worry about it towards your salary cap type thing, which yeah, is probably what's going to be the case for next year. But go ahead. Well, the thing is, I think the, the organization, what they need to do is they really need to evaluate if these players are healthy enough to play on the team. Yeah, and also, I don't understand why. Like, I just said I like how Morning Jones has played around at the season. Don't get me wrong. I do like how Morning Jones has played this year. But at the same time, Felix Sandstrom is the guy that might be your backup in the future. So what the heck is Morning Jones still playing all these games for? So, like, there's a certain point where you got to let the young guy play, especially when the kid played two games, one of which he made 42. Yeah, I think it was 42 saves. uh, uh, Yeah, the same. That was 42 yeah. saves, and then he's the only reason we only lost 4 nothing to the Rangers and not 40 to nothing, because that game was one of the worst defensive yeah, games they, I've seen us play. They <laughs> like, hung him out to dry. Yeah, and, and, but he made – like, that game could have easily been, like, even a 10 spot against you because oh, the yeah. Flyers played terrible defense that game, and Sandstrom's yeah. the only reason, in my eyes, it was 4 nothing. <laughs> so, like and, – And the Rangers are – they're a good team. They, they are a good team, man. Sisterkin, 
Great goaltender. They just have a good team. Oh, yeah. Well, he has to be the best. The, the, that's the most set in stone award. It's Sterk and Vezina. If he doesn't win the Vezina, I don't know what people are looking at. <laughs> yeah, I kind of I think he might be the, the second coming of Lundqvist. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that would be huge for them. Um, he honestly seems like he might even be more like Bobrovsky athletic, quick movements esque than Lundqvist, where Hank was just one of the more technically sound goats that made him so good. Where, like, so Sterkin's. Yeah technically sound, but also kind of like, uh, oh, if I'm caught over here, I can do like a crow hop over yeah. here somehow and save it. And it makes like no sense whatsoever. Like there's multiple saves at that. He looked like he was caught on the other side of the net this year, just Sturkin. And then he just somehow gets to the other side of the net, either doing a split or diving. And you're just like, how did this happen? Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be, your DM was, was supposed to be the guy. But he his stats his stats deteriorated. Yeah, and I think once they saw how good Igor was doing overseas and once he came over, he kind of quickly became the guy over, like you were saying, Gorgiev, because Gorgiev was starting to just kind of be the backup to whoever was there until Shostarkin came up and platooning with whoever was there. And then uh, when it was Hank or when Hank was injured, I forget who filled in. Uh, but uh, they were able to do that, and then Shostarkin mm -hmm. came up and... Uh, he's really just taking the mantle by the horns. Gorgiev, though, I think if he goes somewhere else, might be able to. At this point, I think he's best suited to move yeah. on from the Rangers. Yeah. But anyway, uh, let's get into wrapping up. We talked about the first two teams, all about the great Reading Royals of this year that are up 2-0 in the series. Uh, if you want to check out those games and pay attention to those games next Thursday, go on Mixler, the Royals Mixler, and you can listen to them. That's for free. Or if you want to get Flow Sports, which doesn't just have hockey on it, it also has a bunch of other stuff if you're interested in sports yeah. as a whole and independent leagues and all that as baseball yeah. and all that. Uh, so, uh, so you could definitely get into that. Also college hockey. But uh, you can watch it on there. For the Phantoms, that's AHL TV for people that don't know. And then also yeah. on the Phantoms 365 app. But for the Philadelphia Flyers, um, that's also on uh, the NHL app. If you want to listen to it for free, you don't have to pay for that. And then people know where to get the games if you have to pay for it for the Flyers. But when it comes to the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, my take on this season is it, one word is inconsistency, but the other thing is your bad start kicked your butt. The, ba the bad start in yeah. October, November is what did them in. Yeah, um... I actually say it's it's got to be both, you know, inconsistency and a bad start. I mean, uh, the injury to Wade Allison in training camp, the the injury to to Zade Wisdom really affected them in the long run, and they started getting inconsistent. There was the injuries to Sancho and Erson, and the constant goalie carousel really affected the team's play. Yeah, yeah, they did have injuries early at the, especially when the guys like from covering guys they never like using that excuse. I used to be like, okay, yeah, injuries they the, they affect it. Now usually I just since hockey players don't like using that excuse, I don't give it to them. So I would just say you still could have found a way to because this team did have guys that on paper yeah. did do really good in the past. And for the first two months of the season, they didn't. And then in December onward, yeah. those same guys started picking up their uh, yeah. play. So I think uh, I think um, they really could have been better in the first. Because inconsistency is why they haven't made absolutely. it. But go ahead. Yeah, I absolutely agree there. Yeah, because I was going to say inconsistency is why they didn't make it. But at the same time, it's not just inconsistency. It's the fact that. You wouldn't have to have won, had to win the final five in order to have a chance to make it if you won even three more games potentially in the first two months of the season. That that's all I'm saying. Like it's not even a big group of games you had to be better in in the first two months of the season. Now hindsight being 2020, it's like you had to win literally maybe three or four more games, and the, and, the, and then you would have been fine at this point, and you would have been sitting a lot more pretty. And the thing is, they had so many chances to get that last playoff spot. Hartford was doing horrible. Yeah. Uh, uh, they they got to call Hartford, but last night's loss 
to the Bears really messed up their chances, unfortunately. Well, and now they're real- out. Now they're actually eliminated. And they're officially eliminated now, so they can't get in now. So the last time the Phantoms made the playoffs was in 2018. When they played that game against the Charlotte Checkers, it went to five, I think, four ever times. And, um, yeah, I think it was four. Yeah, made five. like 98 saves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah that I think it was four. I think you're right with four. It might have been five, but but that was that memory from that long ago is not going to be perfect yeah. uh, for me. But for me though, the Phantoms, I think it's still similar to how that we said with the Flyers, but even yeah. more so with the Phantoms because the Phantoms are going to have the young talent before it gets to the Flyers. You got Sami Tamula coming back over, who started the season with the Phantoms, yeah. then went overseas and did fantastic in his homeland. Yeah. He'll be back and playing in the AHL. That's good. That, that's going to really help you. Uh, Wisdom will be playing next year. Forster will be starting there next year. So those guys can build themselves. So I think naturally this team and also with the fact that everybody on the team from uh, the Lazinski's coming back, who probably make the Flyers next year. So you don't really have to count him. But like Wiley, Shushko has been playing great. Strom has been establishing himself into a role. Uh, So like everybody, Ratcliffe's been doing good into the role they put him in. And then whenever you needed to use Logan, uh, not Logan Day. Whenever you had to use Ryan McKinnon, he's even stepped up. And then Logan Day, to me, is a pretty underrated defenseman that's filled it well. And then Alex Kyle, for being a small guy, is good in front of the net. So they have guys. I think it's just you have to have these prospects come in that are still coming in from our system. And then as those guys come in, the few I mentioned and others, that's just going to make the Phantoms naturally better because they were better the last few months of the season. That next year, I wouldn't even be surprised if they're a playoff team because you have, like, if you have wisdom, if you have Tamula, you're getting so much skill added into that lineup and Forrester. Yeah. And, so that's going to really go. And also, um, Tyson Forrester, too. Exactly. Tyson Forrester. Yeah. yeah, that's, uh, I think the only reason they kept him in the juniors was for health. There's no reason to rush him back. You might as well let him just play amongst his own age group. And work his way back rather than have him get banged up again in an AHL game. That would just be stupid. So I think that's the reason why they um, allowed him to stay in the juniors. Then he'll be back kicking butt like you just hinted at next year. But so, um, I just have a question. Did the Reading Royals, did they have a TV deal yet? They do not. No, the Royals, it's it's on flip. They used to be uh, ECHL TV. And then now ECHL TV is just through Flow Sports. So yeah. if you download a float, the flow sports, and then whatever, I, I forget what the pay is for that. But uh, and then yeah. you get flow sports. That's basically the TV deal. It's a streaming service. It's not a TV. Also, they were also on something called BC TV at one time, Berks County Television or something. Okay, well I'm not up in Berks County, so yeah, you could be right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm located back towards philadelphia so i'm not up in birch county so yeah you might you might be right about that though yeah because sometimes phantoms games are on on are on a wfmz which is the channel yeah and i honestly i honestly think they need to put more phantoms games on tv oh yeah yeah i mean well up there they do because it has service electric network where the problem is you have to have service yeah, you have to have service electric network, which is only kind of up there unless if you pay extra for it, where I think that's why they don't do it on 69 FMZ all the time because of cop, not copyright, but because of the contractual obligations. But yeah, I agree. It would be nice to have more on. But yeah. um, I, I think uh, for me, the AHL TV, though, I do like having because it's easy. Like the AHL TV. It's probably one of the easier ones to go to. Flow's not bad. Yeah, it's it just flow has issues with sound and lag sometimes. That sometimes it takes a where AHL tends to just be really quick. Yeah, I watched a couple of Reading Royals games, and the volume was so so low, I could hardly hear the announcers. Yeah, it's because flow's because Mixler. The problem is if we turn it up too loud, then Mixler's loud as heck. And then flows at like a regular volume. So it's like, it's like with flow, the sound's weird. So like, it's like, if you turn it up too loud, the mixer's like, yeah, that was a great play, buddy. 
and it sounds like you're like screaming yeah. into them. And then Flo's just like, yeah, that was a great play by Braden. Lo-. And, and it sounds normal. So like, it, like it's kind of like balancing out the the two um, sides of that. But anyway, Timmy, we're at about thirty minutes. So I really thank you. Uh, for joining i'm definitely going to have you on again though it's going to be and uh, as much as you want to hop on you're definitely welcome to when i have free time but oh, if you cool. have anywhere you want to uh, share um out so people can follow you and continue to follow your podcast i definitely will give you the opportunity to do that now okay my um my twitter is at flyers guy 86 54 my instagram is timmy underscore fly timmy underscore Flyers guy. My YouTube channel is Timmy Flyers guy. My Facebook is Timmy Flyers guy Sulak. And um, make sure you guys uh, check out my videos. Check out all my series on my uh, check out free game report, Flyers free game report. Also check out Flyers minor league report, Royals playoff report, and also, uh, subscribe, leave a like on my videos, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll get all my content. Yep. Well, thank you, Timmy, for joining. You can follow me, uh, as you all know, JJ Boric, uh 26 on Twitter. You can look up, I actually have two different Facebook, one's older, one's newer, so if you want to friend both of them, sure, uh, do that. Uh, and that's just Joseph Boric. one might be Joe Boric. you'll find it. Uh, and then... Uh, Instagram is Bork6789. I would recommend if you're going to contact uh, me to people that listen to the podcast to do that through Twitter because that's the quickest for me. Uh, but everybody have a great, safe, pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below to help us grow. And I really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. I thank Timmy for joining us. Go follow his stuff, guys. Stay safe out there. And enjoy the rest of the hockey season and the postseason for the Reading Royals. Peace out, everybody.